copies. I have no copies on like school shoes. I thought it was zebras, but they're actually close to like giraffes. Now copies are very solitary animals, so not to be on big groups or herds. They really do prefer their own company to the company of others. They also like to hide quite a bit, so seeing them on the open like that is actually a pretty rare event. Now we're on the left hand side of BDC, a very beautiful black and white bird. That is a saddle built stork. Basing by that bird, actually about five feet tall, with the wings on it's nine feet across, so very, very big. Now the way you can tell the difference between the male and the female saddle built stork is by looking at their eyes. The males have dark brown eyes, so the females have bright yellow eyes. Inside across the water towards the very back of the BDC. Very beautiful black rhino. Now, black rhinos are massive. They went to 3,000 pounds of pure muscle. They would charge it to 30 miles an hour. Now, they have no natural enemies, so it is quite sad to know that the real threat to their beautiful animals exists humans who poach them for their horns. There's a little bit less than 5,000 black rhinos in Asia and continue to be hunted to the big sting for the next five years. Rhino horns are made of keratin, the same exact material that our fingernails and our hair is made out of, which makes it even worse to know to be hunted for something so common. Now we're on the left hand side towards the top of the hill. You really see very beautiful copper colored antelope. Those are the ghosts of the forest, the bongos. Our bongos are commonly referred to as ghosts of the forest because they are very rarely seen in nature. Bongo is also the largest species of forest antelope living around six feet of the shoulders and weighing over a thousand pounds. Now they have the beautiful tan colored antelope there, those are the greater kudu. Now greater kudus are the second largest species of antelope living around 55 inches of the shoulders. Any of those are female greater kudus. Some of the bigger animals in the reserve tell us one of the most dangerous. Asafi is a Swahili word that translates to pure. It's also be called the pure river. Now we're on the left hand side, right around the island there, you're going to be able to see one of the Nile hippopotamus. Now, Nile hippos are massive. They got to 5,500 pounds and they're able to hold their breath for eight minutes at a time. And they are one of the most dangerous animals in Africa because they have very short tempers and extremely territorial. Also, the correct name for a group of hippos is a bloat. Also, atop the island there in the center, you have the pink black pelicans. Now, the pink black pelicans are the name for the beautiful pink color, so that appears in the back for mating season. The amazing thing about this bird is actually their wingspan. It's about seven to ten feet, all about as wide as a canopy top of your head. So the correct name for a group of pelicans is a pod. Unless they are fishing as a group, in which case they would be called a fleet. A little further up by Eddie on the left hand side of the sea, the Nile crocodiles. The Nile crocodiles are the second largest species in the crocodile family. You get about 16 to 20 feet long and anywhere from 500 to 1,000 pounds on average. Now during the hot summer days, if they have been too much sun, it will come to see the crocodiles in the nose right away. That's about how they access body heat to regulate the body temperature to remain cool. I admit that some popularized by cartoons and movies. He's a massive man. Now the correct name for a group of crocodiles is completely influenced by where they are. If they're outside of the water, they're called a mask. And if they're inside the water, they're called a float. I will continue all I've said into the savannah. Now the savannah is one of the biggest and most easily recognizable animals. It seems going to be to see the very beautiful Messiah giraffes there. I see a few little spring bike, the wildebeest, the cattle with the really, really big horns. Now here on the left hand side of call, this is a savannah overlook. 
got a pretty beautiful view of the section of the reserve and those animals that I mentioned before. Watusi cattle. Now the name Watusi comes from the Watusi tribe, is actually the first tribe to ever domesticate them over here in Africa. Now their horns can go very massive to 6 feet in length and about 30 centimeters in diameter at the base. Now having their horns seem extremely heavy, they're actually quite light since they're hollow. And made of a honeycomb type structure that helps circulate blood, allowing them to cool down. The Nkoldi cattle is also a sign of wealth to the Maasai tribe of Africa, so the wealthier you are, the more Nkoldi cattle you have to represent that wealth. There are also a mixed breed between the Zebu cattle of Africa and the ancient Egyptian longhorn. They're so unique, they actually belong to their own little group called the Hyenidae. Really cool thing about a group of hyenas is that the lowest ranking female is actually higher up in command than the highest ranking male. It's just not commonly found among the group. Petter goose sound wild. Now, so the correct name for a group of hyenas is a clan. And this close about 40 to 50 members in each clan. seems towards the back right that one of the beautiful Maasai drives has stopped the flow of traffic. Drives are very, very patient animals. They know that if they wait in front of our trucks for long enough, a beautiful green pickup truck will race across Savannah with delicious treats to paint them out of the way. So they do this quite often, about four or five or six times every single day. We call it a traffic jam. I actually be able to see the pickup truck over there already now. It's like clockwork. Might be here for a couple more minutes, a couple seconds, or a couple hours, you never really know. So if there are any questions you may have about anything I've said, or anything you've seen, or anything you're seeing now, just go on ahead and ask away. So it's the very back of my truck. I do need that face covering to remain on, please. That's me snugly beneath your chin, covering well above your nose and on your face.
ability to see the wildebeest here on both sides of the vehicle. That wildebeest traveling some of the biggest animal migrations. You can see my good goose to 1.5 a million of them. Now they travel for about 500 to 1,000 miles across the African savannas, which are water or food. And the name of transit over from Africa is wild beast. Really cool thing about the wildebeest are very smart animals that actually protect themselves when they sleep. I let them sleep in a big circle and facing a different direction. So they have ears and horns points in every direction. So they know when danger's coming just a little bit too close. Also the correct name for a group of wildebeest is a confusion. I also get to see a lot of these giant mounds on the windows are these are actually termite mounds. Now some of these termite mounds can be measured up to about 25 to 30 feet tall. And they are as well as concrete and totally dry. That's where elephants and rhinos like to use them as scratching posts. Now also finally worn down and turned more of a dome shape like that one there on the right. And the smaller ants a little bit the they have to use them as lookout posts. So you can see with the tall grass and make sure nothing dangerous is hiding in there. Inside, you'll be seeing two baby giraffes, or at least the two youngest of the tower of giraffes. There's one lying down, there's one standing up more towards the center. It seems like we're also going to be able to see the tallest giraffe in the entire reserve. It's actually in there across halfway on the left. Now they're on board of the green with the pink feathers, actually, all the time. They're on board of the green feathers. 
Alrighty, on the right hand side of BDC, very beautiful and intelligent, so they send it to our woodworks. Amazing thing about these things, you got nine months of that water, so having temperatures up to 120 degrees. The very sad thing about that into species, due to extreme habitat loss, are actually extinct, that's how to protect the reserves. You can no longer find them out in the wild. Some very cute Nigerian golf coats. I am very sad to say that we're coming to an end of this safari journey. I do hope you enjoyed and thank you very much for coming along with me. I have a new share love and a person for all these animals. Gonna have fun the way you can. Right away, doing so as a Jewish street and use on a cycle. It was like a plastic cardboard glass paper even on cell phones. Cell phones actually contain a side of material called coltan. And coltan is in mind very, very closely to a lot of these animals' habitats. Now they the mining operation and the small other habitat scattered is not good for any of these animals. Now the great way of helping out is the donation fund. Is the largest they match your donation dollar for dollar. Out of the profits to the animal conservation to help protect not only these beautiful species you saw in the but also very dangerous species all over the world. Now the absolute best way to help out is to learn as much as you can. If you just continue learning, there's an amazing walking show over in Africa called Global Falls Exploration Trail. There you can see some lowland mountain gorillas, even if they're from a better video. Now, they're from Eric Katz, and they 